Howdy gamers, how's it going? Jester back at it again with another dog shit video. So today I wanted to go ahead and do a battle station tour. Before I get into this, I would like to say that my setup itself is not quite done. Um, I have quite a bit of like stuff I need to do with my table and my room and soundproofing. And like, for example, if you see right here, um, I have my fucking modem and router on the goddamn floor. Uh, I'm going to put, that's my bed. I'm going to put like a, in that corner right there, I'm going to put like a table and have the modem and router over there above my bed. Um, and have some stuff, like have a small table, short table to the side to hold my wires and stuff. But that stuff I don't think anyone really gives a fuck about. So to kind of keep it short, I have, as of today, I have my battle station done. Like, the parts that people actually fucking care about. And I'm really, really happy about this. The reason that is is because I've been working the last couple of months, both in the ways of saving money and doing research of like trying to get my perfect setup. And when it comes to my actual desktop itself and my peripherals, it's actually perfect now. And it's this really, really cool feeling where um, I hit the point with my um, computer itself and my, and my desktop and peripherals that even if I may, like, even if I won the lottery, I wouldn't change anything at all. And I'm really, really happy about that. Like, I got to that point where I can be really happy about that. So, I wanted to go through every single part I have and also kind of explain why I chose what I did. So, a couple of things that I'm going to get soon is like a laptop also. I don't think anyone gives a fuck about that, really. But it's going to be a System76 Gazelle. I've got a used one. Someone's got me a good price. Whatever. We're going to fucking get into it. That's my chair. This is the Smug Ducks, fuck me, Smug Desk Executive. This thing's comfy as fuck. And I'm a bigger guy, right? And I think when you're a bigger guy, you've got to realize, okay, all these little racing chairs aren't really meant for me. And I bought a really cheap racing chair at one point. And not only am I stationary, I'm not going 80 to 150 miles per hour, so I don't really need one, and they're retarded. But I'm pretty gentle with it, but I busted the fuck out of it. So I got a big boy chair here, that way it's going to last me a while, and it's doing great. As you can see here too, I need to replace the table in my trash can. That's like an old dinner tray. I think that thing's older than I am, and my trash can's old and it's a piece of shit. But who gives a fuck about that? Um, we're going to actually talk about the parts that people care about. I'm going to go ahead and sit down here. Um, this is a Logitech C922, and the reason I don't think I'm ever going to replace that camera anytime soon with like a nice nice camera is because is because lighting is very important and i think no matter i want a decent camera but there's no point in getting a really nice one like one that i'll need like a fucking elgato stream link for or whatever um is because i'll always have bad lighting now if you guys were in my stream a lot you would know that i fucking hate lights i am a goddamn goblin in a cave or like a monkey, ooh, ah, and I don't like bright lights, I don't like looking at the sun, even having this light right here on fucking annoys me, um, and I have another light right there, this having it on fucking annoys me, I don't like bright lights, my monitors are pretty dim, so whenever you get a new cam, whenever you get a nice camera, it really needs good lighting, and I don't want to fucking do that. So, yeah, I'm just probably going to stick with the webcam. Um, as you notice, you guys might notice, and I'm trying to get this figured out. Right now, it even, it doesn't sound that great, but I'm trying to make it sound better. Part of it's that I fucking yell right into the mic, and that's not really good for the mic. So, I'm trying to stop doing that, but this is the Shure SM7B. This is the fucking Joe Rogan mic. Now... Why I got that specifically, it's got a FET head hooked up to it too. That just does shadow power so it handles low noise. I don't need that this second, but when I soundproof this room, which I will be doing hopefully soon, I'm going to need that. So I went ahead and bought it at the same time. Um, apparently the Shure also doesn't come with a fucking XLR cable, so I had to buy that also. Um, and I just bought a cheap one because I it's not a lot going on, so I don't have electrical interference. So you don't need, you want a tough cable so it doesn't break, but you don't need like a really expensive one, like those $50 ones. It's not necessary. So I would also like to, oh, okay, oh no, 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 sorry, the mic. Um, so with the Shure SM7B, the reason I got this one in particular was because I knew for sure I wanted to get a Shure mic. Um, but there are a couple options. There's a Shure SM57, which is like a shotgun mic. There's a Shure SM58, which is like the mic fucking Hannah Montana sings with. And then there's a Shure SM7B. So this, obviously, it's a really fucking tough. It's a tank, um, but so is the SM58 and the SM57. 
And, but the thing about it is this one just out of the box sounds slightly better than the other ones. But the thing about that though is with the SM58 and the SM57, they're a hundred dollars. They are about $300 fucking cheaper than what you're gonna pay for this. And that's a pretty big deal. Um, so it's in a pretty big debate because those actually sound almost the exact same. And you can get them to sound pretty much the same fucking way with, um, with a mixer on your computer. But a couple reasons. I wanted the Shure SM7B because I'm just gonna be honest, I feel cool having it. <laughs> I'm not usually a materialistic person. I try to be fairly minimalist with what I buy, but I love audio equipment. That's the one thing. If I short myself out, I'm going to feel like, fuck, I want to get the better thing. I can't, I find trouble being content with it unless I have the best thing. So I have this great deal of happiness that comes from it, knowing that now I have the best mic, right? That feels really, really fucking awesome to me. And also looks really cool. It's got that iconic legendary feeling, even though usually I don't give a fuck about that stuff. I don't give a shit, but for some reason for mics and like headphones, I do. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the headphones now. Now for the audio interface, I have a Scarlett Solo. Um, interfaces don't really fucking matter if you don't have a lot of hookups. So what you need to make sure is it's not dog shit. It has the controls you need to, and that <sighs> that's it. That's fucking it. Uh, so I don't need a really nice one. That's all I need. Be be getting anything better than that's going to be fucking useless because I'm just going to have one in and one out. Also, uh, the headphones I got. These are the Hi-Fi Mansundaras. They are fucking amazing. Holy shit. Part of the reason I think I got these over the HD6XXs or the HD660S is because um, these are very, very comfortable. <laughs> So I, the, my favorite pair of headphones before I owned these that I ever owned were a pair of HD 650s a couple years ago. So I'm kind of now just getting back on the feet of getting nice stuff before I sold a lot of my shit on eBay. And with this headphones though, they are so fucking, they're so beautiful sounding. They are absolutely amazing. They have great, um, they have a great, great sound stage. It's really, really awesome. So much so that you can almost feel like it's happening in real life. The way that someone talks through a video, um, it almost sounds like they're in that exact location if they're also recording with something high quality. It's really, really amazing. Also something that's really nice, and this is kind of true, um, is that uh, this isn't exactly true with all really nice headphones, but because they have such amazing sound staging and such high five high high fucking precision on actual source sound is that when i started buying these headphones i think i started working out harder to make my audio sound better because i think it showed to me how dog shit my audio was and also now when i watch some videos it annoys me because i realized that their audio was dog shit and i didn't really notice that like when i have bad headphones or like i was using earbuds for a while i wouldn't really fucking notice but now that i have these headphones and i notice bad audio a lot a lot easier and it makes some videos even hard to watch which i've came across watching a whole bunch of programming and godot tutorials um but it's good in a way because it makes me appreciate those really good sounding things so it's a trade-off that is absolutely fucking worth it to me um, so I also have a stream deck. Um, stream deck is a weird thing. I, I think stream decks or macro keys in general are something that's extremely underrated on Linux. So if you use Linux, you're probably aware that you can do almost everything, literally fucking anything, even specifically in a program you're running through the terminal. And what you can essentially do with a stream deck and stream decks have great, um, great compatibility with Linux through third-party software, you can essentially have a command on the terminal macro to a stream deck. And you can do this with anything. You can get like a, if you want to do something much more budget, so that way you can't control the fucking little buttons and what they look like, um, you just want keys, you can actually buy a like separate numpad plugin and use that as macro keys for Linux terminals, and they're extremely nice. But the stream deck allows you to put specific images on it, and it's fucking amazing. So... Um, I'm gonna go and talk about the monitors. This is this is the BenQ. Uh, I bought this. It's a BenQ XL2411P. This thing is fucking amazing. The reason it is is because it's, I don't like any bullshit. It's extremely good at being a 1920 by 1080 monitor at 144 hertz. It's just very good, and there's no bullshit. It's no frills. The only problem about it that's a little bit issue. It's got kind of thick bezels. But who gives a fuck? I'll get over that. It doesn't really matter that much to me. Um, you also notice now I have a three monitor setup, which I'm fucking, it's, I love it so much. <laughs> I thought dual monitor was great. I think if you use a single monitor and you have the money to use dual monitors, you're fucking retarded. You don't know what you're missing out on. Uh, MenQ is great for gaming. Very fast or responsive monitor. 
recently I got this one. This is a 4K pretty as fuck LG monitor. I love it. I've never owned a 4K monitor before. Um, I think for the most part, um, with monitors that are supposed to look pretty, they're almost all the same thing, right? And that's kind of why I like the really cheap BenQ one is because monitors actually are mostly just the panel. But the thing about panels inside of a monitor is that 99% of monitors that are of that type use the same fucking panel. So for example, this LG monitor is using pretty much the same 4K IPS panel that every single other monitor is going to be using. So there's no fucking reason to really buy something that's really, really nice, because they're all going to be the same thing, so you want to get something based on the features it has and its durability. Um, so, fun fact about this monitor is I was supposed to get one about a week ago, and it arrived about a, uh, about a week ago, and um, I told Amazon it got broken during shipping, but fun fact is I was setting up this monitor stand, I fucking stepped on the f new 4K monitor. Now, I know that sounds shitty, but at least it was the one I just got, because then I could have said it got broken shipping. If I stepped on the S ones, I'd be pissed. Um, this is just some fucking Biotech 1920x1080 monitor. It was really cheap on Amazon, like, two years ago or something. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just a third monitor. I don't use it that... It's not as important as the other two, so it's just a cheap 920 by 1080 monitor. It's not dog shit, but it's just a good cheap one, you know? Now I'm going to talk about my PC. So this... My PC was a lot of fun, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up my P, my part picker list here. So, the processor it has... And I'll have this... I'll have all... I'll try to have every single part of my, uh, like, battle station linked in the description. Actually, let me explain before I get into the parts. I got a really nice computer. Uh, once again, I'm on Linux, so this is going to be an AMD build. Uh, so, being on Linux makes a couple of things. It's that drivers can or cannot be an issue. Usually, it's for the better unless it's an NVIDIA card. Then you can have a little bit of trouble. Intel or AMD doesn't really matter. So, I don't really do anything that crazy on my computer i don't do like really high-end 4k gaming the only game i'm really playing right now is old school runescape i do some editing uh so i don't really need like a really really nice computer but i still wanted one that would be the pretty much as good as i'd want anything past this point i'm not really going to notice and it's also budget so it's the nicest computer i can get within reason technically i can do a three five thousand dollar build but you can go fuck yourself because i'm not really going to notice extremely nice parts in my computer because i don't really do anything that demands it from them and so i just got one that can do everything i want to do extremely comfortably and it resulted in about a seventeen hundred dollar build uh, the prices have now dropped down to about 1600 because of all the NVIDIA stuff, but that's okay. Um, because, and I'll get into it, I have an AMD graphics card, so, yeah. Um, so I'll explain that later, though. So I got a 3900X AMD. I know there's 3950s, but usually I got, like, the gen before, like, the budget version of current gen or the gen before because I don't really need the most top-end stuff because computer parts per performance function exponentially. So, for example, something that is, just came out and is the top of the line is going to often cost two times as much as the next generation, even though it isn't two times as powerful. Now, that's not always true, but it's true a lot of the time. And for what I my specific needs, it mostly was true. So I got the stuff that was pretty good, but wasn't that quite top end because you're just because when you take that one step on that graph exponentially, it's a massive jump in price. And I don't need anything much nicer. So I got a 3900X processor. does plenty good enough what I need. I got ID cooling cooler. I got the B5550 Asus motherboard. Now this one is not quite exactly what I was going to buy originally. I believe originally I was going to buy some X570 motherboard. But they were out of stock when I was buying it. And motherboards don't quite matter. They make a small difference. But this is still a nice motherboard. And sadly I wasn't able to quite get the one I wanted. But it's really okay. It's not the big of a deal. It's just a motherboard. So I got a G-Skill Rip Gauze 32 gigabytes of ram at 3600 ddr4 just good ram it's just good fucking ram i don't know i got um, a one terabyte nvme and that's all i have for storage so i am consider myself i try to be pretty organized especially in my computer files and i don't hold on to anything i think i'm probably one of the few people that do stuff on youtube and i don't give a fuck about holding on to my video files i really don't if the video gets deleted off of youtube it's fucking gone i don't give a shit i don't hoard stuff in general i try to have only what I need and anything I don't need I sell that's a big reason why any electronics I'm not currently using and don't plan on using I'll immediately sell on eBay so pretty much what you're not seeing here is about everything 
So I only need a one terabyte, and I wanted a really fast, so I got an NVMe. So the card I got was, in, uh, to explain, I'm, once again, I'm on Linux. So I got an AMD graphics card. I think AMD gets a lot of fucking shit, and honestly, it pisses me off. Because I don't think people realize that AMD has an equivalent graphics card to about a 2070 Super. And if you are on Linux, it's equivalent to about a 2080 Super, because you can have more, because the AMD cards perform even better on Linux. Especially if the game has native support. But even with Proton or some Wine stuff, they're still extremely good. Especially with stuff like game mode. So I got the 5700 XT. So I'm, I essentially got like a 400... And this was before the new NVIDIA stuff. Remember, this was before all this new 3000 series stuff. So I essentially got a 2080 Super for $400. And specifically, I got the 5700 XT 8GB Nitro Plus. This is my card. And I'll have this linked once again. The case I got was the Fractal Defined C. It's just a cool case. I like the words. I like brushed aluminum. It's somewhat minimalistic. I fucking hate RGB. I, I, and now you'll notice on the keyboard I've got RGB. I just haven't gotten to QMK yet. I'll explain the keyboard in a second. I just got a 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Doesn't fucking matter. Um, I got two Noxua fans. Just good fans. You know, thermal paste, fucking fan splitter pins. Rest of it, whatever. Um, so yeah, that was my build. Hopefully I explained everything. My build, I think, is a little odd, but I'm very, very, very happy with it. Howdy gamers. Uh, I was editing and forgot to mention which mouse and mouse pad I use. So, I'm going to talk about that really quick. I've talked about this mouse previously, like I have a lot of my stuff. This is the Cooler Master MM710. Now, I think as of a couple years ago, and a, almost a year ago, mice were extremely neglected um, as a peripheral. People use dog shit mice. And so that one was really good because early on there weren't a lot of options. At the time there was only Final Mouse Mice, and Final Mouse is a piece of shit company. And then there was the Glorious Master whatever, oh I think. That was a pretty decent mice, but it was supposed to be a really lightweight, that was supposed to be a really lightweight mouse, even though they had fucking RGB in it. Why use unnecessary electronics and fucking LED lights that weigh it down for no fucking reason? I get it only adds a couple of grams, which is almost fucking nothing, but still, it's fucking retarded. Do you really need pretty lights that bad, you goddamn retard? I'm getting intense about this. So the Cooler Master, er, Cooler Master MM710 came out, and it was really great. As of a couple years ago, I thought it was the best mouse, and it's still arguably the best mouse. A lot of really good options. The mouse pad, this right here, is the Ninja Artisan FX. At the time I bought it, I think it was also about a year, no, it was a little over a year ago because I actually built a mouse before I got the Clear Master MM710. And at the time it was even better than a mouse I built from scratch. But the mouse pad itself was like really the only option for like a really smooth gliding mouse pad. Um, I don't think it's a good option anymore though. If you already bought one, there's no reason to get rid of it, but they're just quite expensive. I think I paid like $40 for one, which is a lot for a mouse pad. Now there's quite a few really good mouse pads that have very low friction that I feel like um, a lot of people like HyperX, for example, are selling and they're a lot easier to get a hold of now. I used to, I had to buy, sorry, I had to import this mouse pad actually from Japan. Uh, they were very hard to get a hold of, but now... Um, now there's a lot of options. Same with mice, same with mouse pads. Um, I, as of a year ago, I thought these were both amazing, but now there's better options. Or no, sorry, now there's equivalent options. It used to be pretty clear cut. Something I want to mention too before I move on is that uh, mouse weight is not fucking everything. Mouse weight is part of the equation for something to have low friction. Low friction is what you're actually going for. A lightweight mouse, other than just being healthy, that you're using less force on your hands over time. Um, a lightweight mouse is really good because friction will cause your mouse to jump over particular spots and it gives you a better level of precision for what you want to do. So I think that if you can, if you do like a lighter mouse, there is an objectively better experience you're going to have with it, even though it's more difficult to get used to than a heavier mouse because you have to be more precise, you have to use more micro hand movements to get specifically where you need to be, whereas in a heavier mouse, but it's much better control and you are able to move it a lot better. So stuff that's really important is like the mouse pad, the feet on the mice is extremely important, the cable is extremely important, um, your sensor can also matter, but it has to push returns like everything else so anything past 16k like the difference between two like the difference between like 6 and 10k dpi is massive but the difference between like 16 and 18k dpi is almost nothing so your mouse sensor and it being better actually has depreciating returns there's like an exponentially lowering 
uh, increase on the effectiveness on a better sensor. So once you get one that's about 16K plus, it doesn't mean that much, but it's still something. Uh, but yeah, okay, that's it though, gamers. I'm going to go back to the original recording. Peace. So one thing I'd also like to talk about, and I actually think it's what I'm talking about last, is my keyboard. Uh, which, not joking, was more thought, not that I didn't put thought on my PC, I've thought and researched and tested a whole bunch of stuff for everything. But this is my keyboard. Or as I talked before, I used to be really, really, really into mechanical keyboards. Really, really into the whole thing. And I think a lot of people say that, and then they use cherry switches, so I want to punch them in their fucking throat. Um, but I kind of got really into that scene. I never got quite to the point where I was trying to snipe $2,000 IBM Model Fs off of eBay. But I definitely got to the point where I built my own board. So this is a, this is a KBD Fans 75% version 2, uh, which is the case. The keycaps are die sub ABS. Um, I just, they're smooth. They feel nice. It doesn't matter. Keycaps don't matter that much. Those are something that get pre replaced usually. Um, but you want to get nice die sub or double shot usually. Um, also something, I don't think a PBT and ABS, I don't think are quite... I don't think people talk about them quite enough. If you notice the enthusiast, they'll start using die sub a lot. And that's because you'll get a much more traditional keycap feel. A lot of old keyboards, very smooth, very silky smooth. It's beautiful. And also it has a more bassy punch to it. Um, PBT uh, keycaps will actually pitch up your key presses. And most people are looking for a clack and it can turn it into more of a click sound, if that makes sense, with linear switches. With clickier switches, it can make them sound less hollow, less pingy, if that makes sense. And with tactile, it just gives you that bump sound better. It makes it more bassy, which is usually what people want with tactile switches. So I think uh, double shot ABS or die sub ABS, which is my personal favorite, are actually the best type of key switches instead of PBT. So I thought we just talking about that. Also, I have KL box and navies. Um, it's because I type like a fucking lunatic i smash my keyboard so i usually don't even notice tactile switches especially shit like cherry mx brown or cherry mx blue those aren't even fucking real that's that's a linear that's just a shitty linear switch and if you start doing stuff you realize that's what most people agree with so i like KL box navies is because i actually know what i'm fucking hitting that actuation point and i'm smashing it so hard that even sometimes i don't notice and i might as well use linear um but they're just so fucking fun to press. <laughs> That's a big reason. I know it sounds weird, but I, I don't think there's an objective way to go about keyboards, and you should do what you personally love. And I think the reason I've fallen in love with the KO Box and Navy switches so much is that even though I don't think they're the most optimal, I don't think really anything is. And I've had so much fucking fun, if that makes sense. Like, it's fun to type on it, and that's what you want out of a keyboard. A $5, if you want to be, like, a pro fucking gamer, the best at a game you're playing, then honestly, you could use a $5 Office Depot membrane Logitech keyboard. It doesn't fucking matter. When you get into keyboards, you get into what you personally love, and not some weird delusion of what's practical, because it doesn't fucking matter. The people selling mechanical keyboards like they're optimal for gaming are fucking retarded. Membrane keyboards, $5 keyboards, it'd be fine. The meta for CSGO was actually using membrane keyboards until pretty recently. I remember playing 2016, 2017, a lot of the top level pros were using membrane boards. It doesn't fucking matter. So yeah, sorry, that's about it. Um, this video was kind of long. Um, once again, I have quite a bit of work I want to do with my setup, but this is like the battle station itself. It's not so much like a studio tour. I've got a lot, you probably hear the traffic in the background i've got a lot of soundproofing to do i'm gonna get a laptop i'm gonna get some like table stuff doing i'm gonna try to make my cable management better a lot of stuff i need to generally work but when it comes to the specific products i'm done i'm done with the battle session it's really a great feeling uh, i'm seeing that i've been recording for 21 minutes now i apologize about that i wasn't expecting this to be near this long but it's been fun to talk about. I feel like in a couple of months, I'm probably going to do a whole studio tour. So I'm going to talk specifically about everything other than the actual computer and the peripherals. So stuff like the table I chose, the monitor stand, my lights, my tables, my wire management, stuff that is more my room than it is my computer, if that makes sense. So I appreciate you guys coming along. I appreciate, fuck me, am I retarded? I appreciate you guys, um watching and i would also like to thank youtube doing well i think youtube doing well helped me afford this stuff um i have made i think oh i think somewhere around 1200 1500 dollars from youtube which is a lot that helped pay for this quite a bit so that gave me more money uh to spend other than just bills or basic adult shit so yeah that's it though gamers have a good one